Good evening. It is a question as old as the ages. Could there be life on Mars? Well, tonight we're closer than ever before to getting some answers. The Phoenix space probe is now sitting on the surface of the red planet to search for the chemical building blocks of life. And Canada has a major role with a multi-million dollar weather station to monitor the atmosphere. But getting there was the biggest challenge. Tonight's Mars landing was a do or die descent. CTV's John Vanavalli Rao was among those watching and waiting as Phoenix took the final plunge. All stations, EDL calm. In the hours before the landing, there was a lot of tension at Mission Control as they braced for one harrowing drop to the surface. It doesn't matter how many times we land successfully or unsuccessfully on, on Mars, this is a jittery time. A thrill ride described as seven minutes of terror as the little probe slammed into the Martian atmosphere, carrying with it Canada's first instruments to reach Mars. Hundreds gathering at the Canadian Space Agency's headquarters, hoping to witness a historic moment. We are nervous about this landing because it's such a big deal to be part of a mission like this. But to have any chance of surviving, the probe had to not only fire a parachute at exactly the right time, but rely on a style of touchdown not pulled off since the Viking missions 32 years ago. Phoenix using retro rockets instead of a protective airbag to soften the landing. And at just before 8 o'clock Eastern time, scientists on Earth getting the news they were hoping for. Phoenix has landed. Welcome to the northern place of Mars. The scene in Montreal. The lander touching down in the northern area of the planet where scientists hope to scoop up water ice from under the surface and look for traces of organic compounds to see if Mars could have supported life in the past. And is this a habitable zone on Mars? That's an important uh, scientific result that I think will change our understanding of, of Mars. As for the Canadian contribution, it is a weather station that will measure the wind and temperature on Mars as well as study clouds and dust in the atmosphere. And given that we're in the northern polar area, that should be a permafrost there, and we'll be getting some ice, and who, uh, who knows what else we'll be getting. And just two hours after the landing, the first pictures started coming in. Scientists overjoyed to see the first ever images from the Martian Arctic. The pictures also confirm the lander is in a good position and appears to be well-placed to begin digging, a mission they hope will last about three months. Sandy? Okay, thanks, John. CTV's John Venavalli Rao in Toronto. And joining us now, Kevin Short. He is the president of the Canadian Space Society and had a hand in developing the Canadian technology aboard Phoenix. Congratulations, Kevin. A Canadian first. Let's put it in perspective. Why is this weather station so significant? The weather station is significant in the sense that we are going to be collecting data that has never been collected before and getting a tremendous understanding of what the weather patterns and such are on on the surface of Mars and this really is results of a culmination of cooperation between two big co two major companies in in Toronto Optech and the one that's been making a lot of headlines lately is MDA space missions in in Brampton well the most important thing at this point is whether in fact does work and obviously you're hoping that it does so when will that data first start coming back from Mars the first data acquisition is expected about five days from now, once they've shaken out uh, the, the rest of the spacecraft. Then they'll turn on the weather station, and then they'll start collecting data and be all ready for the scientists here at York University to start the analysis. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin Short with the Canadian Space Society. Closer to Earth, but not that much closer, history may also be made tomorrow morning over North Battleford, Saskatchewan. From where our atmosphere meets space, 40 kilometers up, a French skydiver is hoping to drop into the record books for the highest free fall ever. As CTV's Murray Oliver tells us, 64-year-old Michel Fournier sees the stunt as another leap for space development and safety. All quiet here now, but in just a few hours, 40 kilometers above this sleepy prairie airfield, a man plans to fall to Earth from the edge of space. Michel Fournier aims to set a record and test the body's survival in extreme altitudes. Everybody is like totally thrilled. Uh, we're looking at Michel, who is so ready. I mean, it's like he wants to jump. Fournier's ambition is very nearly out of this world. Lifted by a balloon, he'll ride a capsule like this one up through the atmosphere, wearing an outfit similar to a spacesuit. The maximum is 7 degrees.
twice before Fournier tried and failed to rise high enough. This time, the former paratrooper says rien, nothing will stop him. He'll rise past 39,000 feet, average cruising altitude for a 747, past 62,000 feet, the Armstrong line, where blood boils without a pressurized suit, past 102,800 feet, the current record set in 1960, finally reaching 130,000 feet from where Michel Fournier will jump. He'll be in free fall descent for around seven minutes, his body reaching speeds of 1,500 kilometers per hour. What we really need to know, I mean, what scientists need to know, NASA needs to know, everybody. I mean, it's like, can a man survive at 1.3 Mach? You know, I mean, that has never been done. If we can answer that, you know, I mean, that's going to be a real stepping stone for them. Authorities in his native France refuse to give permission to attempt the jump there. So he's trying here. Fournier says it's all for the good of future space exploration. That the lessons learned will hopefully one day allow for the rescue of astronauts from outer space. Murray Oliver, CTV News, Saskatoon. Well, there was danger from the sky tonight after a weekend of wild weather in Tornado Alley from Oklahoma to the Canadian border. A massive storm system moved into southern Manitoba where a tornado touched down this evening. Environment Canada says no one was injured and no damage reported. Quite a different story south of the border where a devastating twister tore through suburban Minneapolis-St. Paul. Dozens of homes were shredded to bits as the twister moved through. Early reports say a two-year-old child was killed and 20 people are missing. More than 15,000 people were left without power. In China, there is no end to the terror for the survivors of the country's worst earthquake in decades. A powerful aftershock rocked a section of Sichuan province today, crushing 70,000 more homes and killing at least two people. CTV's Beijing bureau chief Steve Chow has the latest. A surveillance camera inside an office building captured the aftershock, with people yet again having to...